And hello again, everybody. It's time for Bay Area Traveler Talk. I'm George Devine, along with our aviation and airline reporter and travel expert extraordinaire, Tim Ju. We're joined today by some special guests from British Airways. Simon Brooks is the Senior Vice President of Sales for British Airways here in North America. And Victoria Madden is the Acting Head of Public Relations for British Airways in the America. First of all, welcome to San Francisco. And you've got some exciting news about San Jose. Indeed. <laughs> Lovely to meet both of you, George. Great to meet Tim. you too. Indeed. And yes, the is really exciting news for us. So 4th of May, we start a brand new service from London Heathrow, a daily service with a brand new aeroplane. And uh, we're delighted to come and talk to you about that and, and anything else you'd like to discuss today. <laughs> Absolutely. And welcome to San Francisco. Thank uh, you. Tim Ju here. Uh, Victoria, uh, welcome to San Francisco. Thank you very uh, uh, much. This is a very exciting news for British Airways. Indeed. And it sounds like there's been a lot of exciting headlines coming out of the airline as of as of late. But today we're going to be focusing on on San Jose and the new flight to San Jose. Tell us more about it. Well, Tim, this is these are really significant times for us at British Airways. This is the fourth destination that we'll be flying to in California. We've already got a wonderful partnership with the team in San Francisco. But uh, like I say, the first week of May, we start flying to San Jose, a daily service, um, a brand new aeroplane. Um, it's a Boeing 787-9 Dreamliner. Um, we've already got the Dreamliner in service, but this really is the latest iteration of that. The Dash 9 is, is for those plane buffs out there is 20 feet longer. We've got a brand new first class cabin um, on this plane, redesigned, uh, that we can tell you all about, um, and three other classes of, of travel as well. But we're really excited about it. So yeah, 4th of May. What are some of your travelers saying right now about their experience with the Dreamliner and other routes that BI flies around the world? There's so much to talk about with this aircraft. First of all, and I can give you all of the statistics, but uh, for people not, not that au fait with, with aircraft, it's got the biggest windows um, for any commercial jet. So in terms of the view that you'll get out of the window, even if you're not sat in a window seat, um, will be that much better than, uh, than some of the legacy aircraft. It's a lot quieter both inside the cabin, but also the noise footprint is up to 60% quieter than, than aircraft of a similar size. Um, the air quality that our customers are going to experience and are already experiencing with the Dreamliner is that much better um, due to new filtration technology that we're using actually on board. So uh, the way that um, the air is actually being filtered through the aircraft, uh, there'll be less, less bacteria, less pressurization um, in the cabin. So our customers are just going to feel that much more refreshed when they get off the plane. And I know that uh, BA flies the 787-8 as well mm -hmm. to some of the destinations. What's mm -hmm. the difference between the Dash 9 variant and the Dash 8? So I alluded to the fact that we've got a brand new first class cabin on it. The Dash 9 has got our brand new first on it. Um, that's one of the main differences. Within that, there's the storage space within the first cabin. Um, there's a, we've got a new Ottoman uh, uh, cabin in the, in, in the first seat that you're going to be able to put not just your shoes, but your, your handbag, your purse, and, uh, and anything else of a, of a medium size that, um, that the, the legacy Dreamliner doesn't have doesn't have the first cabin and a mirror very important I for the lady i didn't know that <laughs> <laughs> very important you will have your own personal mirror in first class which is all important where, okay. where is that mirror located it, well you open up one of the side panels oh, okay. which is where you can put all your personal bits and pieces and you have a fantastic little mirror that you can use so that is very important i think for the ladies traveling in first class definitely and while victoria's looking in the mirror <laughs> there's also um a new 20 23-inch um, flat-screen TV um, in front of you, which is also a lot uh, larger than, um, than previous um, in-flight entertainment models that we had. But it's also facing you. So uh, for the minute that you get on and, uh, and we power up, you're going to be able to watch um, film and TV um, from the gate to when you actually arrive at the other end of the destination. So, uh, yeah, great in-flight entertainment. Now, will you have live TV capabilities? Like if I wanted to watch CNN International or BBC or HBO or yeah. something else while I'm over the Atlantic, I can, I can tune it in. George, we won't have live TV, but what we will have is up to 1,600 hours of television for you. And for a flight that is uh, touching on 11 hours, I think there's going to be enough content there to entertain you. And we do have some fantastic channels like HBO loaded onto our aircraft as well. So you can access some really fantastic... Uh, content through the channels that we do have on board. Now, with Silicon Valley, everybody's got a gadget or two, a device, 
in terms of power at a first class seat, what am I going to have available with, for my iPad, my tablet, my phone, my computer? You know, am I going to run out of a battery before the flight's over? Absolutely not. Every seat, every seat on the aircraft is going to have access to power. So, and that will be universal um, plugs that, whether that's US, UK, EU um, regulations. So everyone will be able to power their devices on board. And what about in-flight connectivity? Is there uh, Wi-Fi that you're able to purchase? We, we do actually already have um, Wi-Fi capabilities on one British Airways flight that travels between the US and the UK, which is our amazing flight that goes between New York and London City. And that's a, a really neat 32-seat business class only flight. So you can get Wi-Fi on that plane, but it's not something we're offering on our other, our other aircraft just at the moment. And that's Speedbird Flight 1, I believe. That's yeah. right. The yes, old Concorde the number. The old okay. Concorde right Flight number. Absolutely. Yeah, with a customs clearance, Shannon. Yeah, absolutely. 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 Now, let's talk about the destination here. San Jose. Why San Jose when you already have two flights a day coming into San Francisco? Why San Jose? I think the beauty of San Jose, although its proximity is clearly close to San Francisco, it's also um, a, a different location. I think one of the first thing I said is that we've got a great relationship with the, um, a, a lot of existing company relationships in San Francisco, a lot of leisure travel agencies that we work with to bring in people from, from the UK and Europe. San Jose is primarily going to be a business route for us, um, first and foremost. And we've been working with the, the team down there, the airport team, the Chamber of Commerce, the Silicon Valley Leaders Group as well have all been uh, working with us for a number of years now. And uh, we see it as, as, a, as a separate destination to San Francisco, but ultimately for our customers that live in the area, we're just bringing choice. And uh, you know, from all of the analysis that we've done, um, we are more than confident there's enough demand to meet both San Francisco um, and San Jose. Bear in mind, we've just put a brand new Airbus A380 um, on the San Francisco route is a real reflection of, uh, of the importance of San Francisco to us. So we're just delighted to be able to serve both of the cities. Now, you talked about connectivity uh, on board in Silicon Valley. In terms of connectivity to other tech centers across Europe and the Near East, what kind of connections can a Bay Area customer find once they land in Heathrow from San Jose? Mm -hmm. in, in terms of the, the network that they'll, they'll be able to take out of um, out of London Heathrow, I mean, George, we, we fly to every major European city out of London Heathrow, but in terms of the customers, whether, and, and mainly business that we're talking about here, but to places like to Israel, down to South Asia, Africa, and, and beyond into Asia, um, that's the beauty of, of this flight. It's going to connect you to the rest of the world. Um, let's talk a little about Club World. Yes. and the business class product, which is uh, very popular. And uh, is there any difference between the Club World cabin on the 787-9 uh, and uh, or, uh, versus the ones that are in the existing A380 or the uh, 747 fleet? Well, bear in mind you're talking to British Airways who were the first carrier to come out with the flatbed. Um, once you have a flatbed, clearly it's, uh, it's quite a challenge to, to get any better um, that, than that. Um, we've got that product on board. Um, I talked about the the larger windows, the air quality, specifically in Club World, there's more storage space. The, the way that the overhead bins actually come down, not only are they bigger, but the way that they're drop down designed, um, it doesn't in, infringe on the, the person below them. So a lot of extra storage space. Mm -hmm. um, We've also got um, a 232 configuration on the aircraft, which is a bit unusual to the uh, the Dreamliner as well, which is, is quite a nice thing, actually. Uh, we've always had a sort of a yin-yang style um, of seat in our Club World cabin. So you have some people facing the front, some people facing the back. Uh, works quite nicely if you're traveling with other people because it means you can look through a privacy screen between the two of you and, and chat without having to crane your neck round. Um, but we've got two seats on the outside, so one facing in one direction, one in the other. And then in the middle, you've got two seats facing in one direction and one facing the other. So actually, if you want the secret of a really good seat um, on a Dreamliner with BA and Club World, then actually that middle seat is actually rather nice because it's got a lot of extra space around it and uh, it's quite a private a private seat as well. Usually nobody likes the middle seat. Well, exactly, but uh, ours is a special one. You know, a, lot of, <laughs> a, a, a lot of couples really enjoy that middle seat and you're, you're alluding to the, the privacy there. For, for people traveling together, actually, it's, it's, it's a pretty popular combination. Yeah. Well, in, in terms of, uh, um, we've seen airlines, especially the international airlines around the globe, 
uh, increase uh, the number of seats available in premium economy. Talk a little bit about World Traveler Plus, your mm -hmm. premium economy cabin. So World Traveler Plus, um, there's a number of things there. Uh, a, a larger seat pitch um, for customers that are traveling in our, our World Traveler or the, the, the economy product. Um, what's great with our World Traveler Plus, and uh, we, we brought this into the service um, a couple of years ago now, is that you actually have the same choice of catering and the same um, the actual catering that we deliver in our business class, our Club World um, cabin, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, it's a product that is priced accordingly for um, premium leisure customers. Um, a lot of uh, people that have uh, um, maybe at different um, different stages of their life that have possibly got a little bit of extra um, income that that, that want to have that extra piece of privacy, the extra leg room, etc. But also for businesses, and San Jose will be. Um, a prime candidate for this um, for startup businesses that will be working on somewhat uh, tighter budgets, premium economy, World Traveler Plus will be a great, great proposal for them. And, and also on the 787-8, uh, uh, which is the first uh, iteration of the Dreamliner, there's 25 uh, there's 25 World Traveller Plus seats on there. And on the new 787-9 that we're bringing into San Jose, there are only 39. So it's actually a really quite a small cabin. Uh, so as well as having a little bit of extra personal space, you're also in what feels like a much more private um, area, which is, is a much more kind of ex exclusive experience for people as well. Last year when British Airways brought the uh, A380 to San Francisco, we had an opportunity to tour it, and the captain... Uh, was showing us around, and he said, that's almost like your own Gulfstream cabin. He said, it's kind of like that's having your it. own private jet. Yeah. It really is. Yeah, yeah, yeah we, get, we, we get a lot of comments like but, that. Yeah. But with a great price tag yeah. attached to it, which is really nice. So it's affordable luxury, definitely. Got it. <laughs> Let's yeah. talk about yeah. You know, in terms of, uh, we've talked a lot about for customers in San Jose, was it something that your European and UK customers asked for was a San Jose route? Absolutely. Um, I, I talked about some of the relationships that we already have in place in San Francisco. Um, when we think about, we've got some really mature corporate relationships already in place in uh, the South Bay area. And we've been talking to those companies for a long time. Now, clearly, a lot of their corporate offices and headquarters are in San Jose itself. But the need for them to travel, London is the number one destination for a lot of these relationships that we already have. Um, but it's the opportunity of the, the, the startup companies and uh, the small to medium enterprises that have been talking to us through the Chamber of Commerce, the Silicon Valley Leaders Group, um, that have actually been saying to us, you know, this is a service that we really want and we will support. And we just can't wait to get going with, the, with a lot of these new relationships. And at the other end of route, obviously in London and the southeast as well, Heathrow is a really important um, airport for business, but it's also a very well-used airport for leisure travellers as well. And California will always be popular with mm. British uh, leisure tourists and also obviously with businesses that want to uh, either do business in the Silicon Valley or in the surrounding areas. So there's definitely been interest on both sides of the Atlantic there for the route. So. Cool. Are there any changes coming for, for passengers at San Francisco or anything like that? I mean, it, you, you are introducing a new flight to the Bay Area market. Yep. Will, it, will there still be a, a, an A380 and a 747 flying? A a absolutely. I mean, the fact that we put one of our uh, biggest, newest aircraft into San Francisco, I would hope is a real sign of our commitment to, uh, to our, our longstanding relationship with San Francisco. Um, I think it's a great reflection, actually, of both of the cities that we're going to be that we're going to be serving. That we're putting our, our brand new aircraft into into this region. So uh, we will just move forward with San Francisco. It's an extremely positive, prosperous relationship for both of us, serving both ends of uh, route London and beyond. But uh, no, we've got a wonderful relationship with the team at San Francisco. Now, the aircraft itself, we've talked a lot about the Dreamliner. It's opened other markets for you as well. Let's talk a little bit about that. So we started flying to Austin in Texas last year. Um, some similarities with Silicon Valley. Obviously, a lot of startup companies, um, a lot of tech business um, has been a resounding success. We're absolutely delighted with the performance of Austin, Texas. I think with both of these routes, um, the fact that we are bringing the Dreamliner in is reflective of the, the fact this aircraft is giving us the opportunity to serve destinations like San Jose, like Austin. We've got it out of Canada. We've got it out of the East Coast 
Um, of and in uh, India as well, yeah, Hyderabad, to India. Yep. Chengdu. Um, we're serving lots of those of those fantastic uh, markets over in over on the east side as well. Uh, the seven eight seven dash nine is also flying to Delhi, Abu Dhabi, Muscat, Kuala Lumpur. So it's yeah, it's, it's it is giving us a really good opportunity to reach some you know some some really fantastic cities around the world with a, a, a really fantastic aircraft. Now, did BA help develop the Dreamliner? <laughs> oh well, that would be a huge statement to make. I, I didn't. I can tell you that. Yeah. So I, I know. Think, I know some airlines collaborated on it. And, sure. You yeah. know, gave Boeing a list of things we want. This no, 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 for sure. I mean, we've got an extremely close relationship with 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 Boeing, and uh, certainly are we, we we have people uh, constantly back and forth between Seattle. So uh, yeah, but I won't make any heady claims around us <laughs> developing uh, the aircraft. Itself. Yeah, there are some pretty clever people at Boeing uh, yeah. creating those uh, those planes, Indeed. and I think we definitely work very closely with them when it comes to kitting out the interiors and yeah. making sure the spec is uh, is as our customers would want it to be. But yeah, I think the uh, the Boeing guys. Uh, yeah, I do a great job on the aircraft design. Great partner. Now back to San Jose. Um, let's talk lounge options. Mm -hmm. um, you, there is a British Airways lounge in San Francisco. Will customers flying uh, in the premium cabins uh, uh, out of San Jose uh, be enjoying a lounge option down there as well? Yes, they will. Yep, they will be using the ALD lounge out yeah. of uh, San Jose. In fact, uh, lounges at either end of route. Um, and uh, it's a... Um, yeah, it's a, a, I've, I haven't been in the last couple of months, but I have, I have, have been in the lounge. It's, it's, it's great. Um, San Jose is, is, um, is such a great airport anyway, in terms of the size of it. Clearly, it's not the size of San Francisco. Um, it's got a real intimacy about it and, uh, and a real professionalism, actually. We work very closely with the team there who've developed a, a really great product for our joint customers. So, um, mm. yeah, we can't wait. Yeah, and that's, and that is the common use lounge. Uh, uh, yeah, and, and, there's, and it's a very, very, the BA lounge will be a very short walk from the gate as well. So it's in a really nice location for our customers. And, of course, you've got really great views of the, of the runway and the airport as well from the terminal building. So, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a really lovely airport to fly out of. Now, once launch day comes, May 4th, what special activities, any special festivities that we might see when you touch down in San Jose? We're going to have a great day. <laughs> we're we're going to have a real, um, a, a real celebration of the new route. Um, I certainly don't want to give, I'll leave a lot too of this to Victoria. Away. I don't want to give too much <laughs> away, but we're working with, uh, we're actually um, with the airport team later today um, to discuss the ongoing plans, but it's going to be a real celebration. And, and I think that's probably all I want to tell you at the moment. Yeah. Well, one of the good news factors that you might have in May is we might be able to see the California drought silver, so they might be able to bring the fire cannons out. Is that right? And yeah. water for you. <laughs> well, the, the only problem we have is that we obviously have to protect the 787 from any incoming jets of water into the, uh, into the flight deck, which is always uh, right. a bit of a concern for us, but they do look Understood. good when we do them. <laughs> and, and it's not just San Jose, California on that day as well. There's That's another right. San Jose route launching. Indeed. There is, although it's launching slightly earlier, thank right. goodness. Oh, so, okay. Uh, yeah, Costa Rica. Uh, is launching around the same time. It was originally scheduled for around May, but that's going to be launching on the 27th of April. Oh, wow. So, uh, so yeah, very exciting. Two different uh, destinations with the same and, name. Uh, it'll be uh, interesting, and it'll be exciting to watch Thank you. Uh, its arrival. Thank you very Simon, much. Simon, thank you so much. Victoria, thank you so much for joining us. And also you. thanks to our hopes here, hosts here at Bravado Coffee, Wine, and Beer. Lee Tran is the owner. does a great job. You can visit him at bravadolounge.com. One second. 70 King Street, right across from AT&T Park, home of the three-time world champion San Francisco Giants. For Tim Ju, I'm George DeVal. Let's thank our guest, Simon Brooks, Senior Vice President of Sales for British Airways here in North America, and Victoria Madden from British Airways Public Relations for the Americas. Thanks a lot, and best of luck with your San Jose adventure. Thank, thank you, you very, very much. much. Great to meet you.